tried doing this video last night. It really didn't work out that well. And uh, this was the follow-on to the short that I did where I had another flea market binge, right? And I think was pretty successful. The first one I had done up in Messina was the acquisition of this Mitchell 300, this later model one, Chinese built. It says it has ball bearings. It's got a five to one ratio and I've counted it, it does. It's got eight ball bearings and it's pretty smooth. It works really good, cast nice. If I was to complain about it, it's got a dinky little handle, but for, you know, there's something jumping already. What I do, that doesn't seem to matter much. And then right alongside the Mitchell 300, last time I had picked up this Daiwa graphite. You know, it's an early graphite rod. Yeah. And it worked good. I caught some fish, had some fun. Did a subsequent fishing trip with it, and it worked pretty well. Now this last time I went up there, I ran into this. and this, the Matsu graphite rod. And I used it last night with this Shimano Sienna I had sitting in a box for a long time. And let me tell you what, it worked beautifully. Beautiful combination, I think they're staying together. Now, understand that my kind of uh, reference is this reel right here. And this is, uh, and get the bark out of it is a lose team lose custom pro and it's an aluminum body a lot of bearings very smooth i've run it for a long time now it's got a lot of time on it, it works beautifully i mean i have no complaints with this um Not at all. So when I found this one, knowing a little bit about the history of the manufacturing of these of these reels, uh, of course it piqued my interest. It's another Chinese built machined aluminum body with brass gears reel. It just has a nice long handle too. Kind of like the lose. Wouldn't surprise me if they were built in the same facility because there's a lot of different companies from lose to pin to a whole bunch of them that basically relabel reels that are manufactured in a, in a few uh, operations in china and they've done a pretty good job over the years this is one now this is was branded wright mcgill in a skeet reese reel this was probably 10 11 years ago and it had some fanfare and so when i found it for 15 dollars, i snapped it right up it seems to be okay it's smooth i can tell you right now that it needs service i have to get in there and put some grease and oil in there and um but it doesn't cast as good as this one it doesn't cast as good as this one and surely doesn't cast as good as this one right here you know why it's got nothing to do with the reel I made the mistake of not putting this on for line. I've done this for years. This stuff right here, it works beautifully. I've tried this. It's like wire. It's all stiff. It does not come off the reel cleanly. For that matter, I had it on a rod that just simply wouldn't cast because it was a higher end rod, actually, with the small, you know, guides up here have the small ones. And with this line right here, the loops hadn't smoothed out. To a straight line they were still going up the rod in a loop and it's like very stiff wire that it doesn't flow like this uh smooth casting line from from trialing so it was an unsuccessful night i was upset with it and i can see using this stuff right here for bait fishing maybe but not for cast and retrieve stuff that soft and smooth casting is not true that's for this kind of line the gold standard for me and this is just not in the same league in terms of how uh, 
easy that comes off the reel and all that. So I'm going to give this one more chance. And what I wanted to do was put it on a lower end rod that had larger guides. And then maybe it'll have a chance to, to cast and uh, maybe it'll redeem itself somewhat. And who knows? Maybe the line flexes and breaks in. I don't know. But uh, that's the mission right now is to see if I can make this reel, which is a nice reel, load it up with this particular line, go out and catch a fish. Now the first lure I'm going to use, I've used this thing for a long time. I don't know if it'll focus or not. And I usually cut off one leg so I can get out of the fish's face easier. And on just a simple cast, it easily gets to the very end of that um, weed bank. So if I can't get there with this rod, that gives you a sort of a tangible, understandable uh, measurement. And on my loose rod with the cherry wood, I can get it almost to that weed bank over there. So that's my, that's my reference, you know, that's where I start from. So let's just see what we got here with the camera. Hmm. All right, for reference, I was about 10 foot short of the weed bank. So this is just not casting at all. It don't matter. Catch fish anyway. Easy, bud. Stop. I don't like blasting products, but this line on this thing is truly miserable. You can hear it. It's like wire going through the guides. And it really hampers the performance of this thing. So I'm going to put the other reel back on with the other line to show you the contrast. Put the Mitchell back on. Yeah. Just cut this off and do it quickly. What a shame. I have to get rid of this line, it's just terrible. And that's this stuff right here. Terrible. Do not buy it. It's a terrible product. What a shame. So we really don't get a chance to test this because that line completely uh, hampers its ability to, to perform. So I'm going to put the Mitchell 300 back on and it shouldn't perform as well as a reel like that but because of the line it has, it's got the right line, it's going to make a huge difference in the performance and even though it's not a particularly fast reel, it's going to be a lot easier for me to deal with because I'll be able to cast Let's bring it up real quick. I'm hoping the camera can see that I, I couldn't even get to the weed bank. You know, when I was whipping it, it still wouldn't get there. The line just simply wasn't going through the guides. It's the first time I've ever used fishing line where it hits my fingers. 
as it comes off the reel because it doesn't, you know, it doesn't unwind fast enough. Okay, I put that same little tiny lure in the same fishing rod, but now I have the Mitchell 300 and it has the, the trilene line and that's the difference, not the reel. So we'll see what happens. Now one of the things, the casting performance actually does affect your ability to catch a fish because it gives you additional surface area that you can fish too if you can get out further. Yeah, right to the weed bank. fish. Check it out. It's a real fish. No baby. That was a nice looking fish. Now I'm telling you the reason why I could catch a fish like that because with this line, I was able to get out a little further. It's a nice fish, that's good enough. I'm gonna take the other rod. Uh, I think I've proven my point with this. I'll break it down. I gotta get out and do some firewood stuff. Broken down. Like I said, the only complaint I have with this is the short handle. Other than that, it's a nice situation. Now let's try this setup. Now I don't think it's gonna catch a fish because they don't like yellow in this pond. They like silver. So, and this is that uh, Matsu rod and the Shimano Sienna that I had in the toolbox for a long time. Let's see what it does. Now this is a little Cleo. And these work good for me on walleye. Not here. But let's give it a shot just so I can demonstrate the ability to cast with this rod. This rod does good. This is not a high-end rod, you know. This is not exactly uh, an expensive rod and reel combination. Yet it does perform quite well. I guess that's part of the point. Flea market buys and stuff like this. You can go out and catch a fish and have fun. I've actually gone past that weed bank now. Right to the weed bank.
enough for now. Wrong color, but this was about just the casting performance. And I'm going to take the camera out to give you a perspective of what I was able to do with this rod reel and line. It's critical. The line is so critical to casting. Let me see if I can summarize this. Seagar versus trilene. I couldn't even get to that weed bank. I was probably 10 foot short of it with the Seagar. With the rod and reel that I just finished casting, I went past, I got into that little cove that's past that point of weed bank into that cove and into that one over there as well. So if you look at the weed bank there, I went another 20 some odd feet. So the, the message is that gives you so much more area that you can fish when you can cast that far. So the line actually does matter. You know what I'm saying? And with that very light little lure, the little Vibrix, I was able to drop it all along that weed bank and go right out to the point. And with the Seaguar line on the same rod, different reel, but it's not the reel, I couldn't even get there. It was like landing three quarters of the way to the weed bank. And you could just hear like abrading along the, the guys. The, the line just simply wasn't uncoiling, wasn't going straight. Man, I'm disappointed in that line. I was hoping it was more expensive, you know. This was like $12, and this was like 10 or something like that. It was a couple dollars different, this being more expensive. And this just outperforms it by orders of magnitude. And so I'm going to have to take that reel and strip the line off it and string it with, with that. All right, this morning I was out here with my son and he was splitting and I was cutting. And uh, I wanted to take this one out of the way because I wanted to open up the path to some of the other tops that are up in there from that logging operation we had done. Oh, I guess it was last fall, right? It's been a year. So I've got this to block up and I've got a piece right there that crosses another trail that I want to clean up. And I just finished fishing. Put all my fish and junk in the side here. And lay right in there. And uh, there's a 262. I'll gas it up, but I'm probably not going to run it. I want to put another couple of tanks on this before I put it away. And it either earns a spot where I just keep running it until it falls apart. Or, you know, I let it uh, run out a couple of tanks and put it away but uh oh yeah just another point um i'm back to using my my bag of of supplies wedges screwdrivers bar nuts you know scrunches stuff like that and i always have one of those for insurance that's the junk pile 572 which Really shouldn't be considered a junk pile because it's actually pretty fresh and runs like it. It's a good running saw. Right now I've got a 24 inch VersaCut on there, but as the seasons begin to change, we begin to see the leaves change, I'm going to go back to a 28 and use that one for, for logging some. And there's uh, the 262 that I ran this morning with a steel chain on the Husqvarna bar. And that's actually a good running saw. It's not going to win any races, but it's just a nice nice running saw. i got to tweak on the carburetor just a little bit because it's a little harder to start than I like. So, anyway. 